issue. How long, <laughs> what, between the time you said, uh oh, my throat's getting sore, and the time that your throat wasn't sore anymore, what was the time elapsed? <laughs> a minute, not if even a minute. You know, I just removed it and it was gone. I mean, I. I so it, it disappears. It. It's like it an eraser comes in and takes it out. Yeah, it's just gone. That's what it's like. When I used to get the flu, I didn't know how to cure it, so I cured it with fasting years and years ago, like back in the 80s and the 70s. And uh, it usually would disappear in about two or three days. I would do a limited fast, like with, you know, pineapples and mm -hmm. carrots and stuff like that to, you know, kill the bacteria and just wash whatever it was through. The, um, with, uh, okay, with, t uh, ha hold up your fingers and test this. Uh, Barb, finger, uh, <laughs> can I, <laughs> can, <laughs> can I cure the flu um, without I fasting? I get a yes. And Barb, with yes. me. Now, yeah. Now, you, you both have. I have cured the flu with. I cured by eating. I cured by eating. I don't know. I could feel it. I ate something that counteracted it. All right. So let's hear yeah. your stories about curing the flu. Barbara's just saying she had one try to come on a few weeks ago, even. Oh yeah, I've had three come on this uh, winter. Three. Um. I'll, I'll say. Uh, uh, do you want to go to the first, Barb? Why don't you just both yeah. talk? You know? I don't really, I haven't really got, I've never really got to this about, I remember we over 25 years, but um, <clears throat> I, I, and I always know that my ideas about the flu is like there's always viruses around, or just like flu season always comes after the holiday season when people eat poorly or mix combine right. in unusual ways that they haven't combined food and they're around people they're not usually around. There's a lot of kids, you know, it's like so obvious to me. Like like being not having a virus or, or congestion, it has to do more with, I think, what you eat, you don't eat. And because then, then one of these viruses or and have something to speak, you know, so like I, I combined something poorly at the perfect storm of, you know, being too sedentary or not eating right, right and having a, you know, some kind of emotional upset and suddenly I could feel something happening and then I quickly ate something else to counteract it, like maybe even like an apple or just drink a big bunch of water or did any, I just eliminated it. So I think most people don't understand and they panic or they get the shot or they, you know, immediately just get in bed and hold up with some something even worse, I would imagine. Like sometimes I have to keep moving through things, I go outside, get fresh air. Where I think most people's reflex is to stay in bed when they have when they think they have something so uh, sometimes it has to be it has to be aggressive. But I don't I just my theory of the flu is it has more to do with poor food combining and you know, making it susceptible to not moving what's already out there to you fast enough. Thank uh -huh. 
how do we were the micro we still exist, but I don't catch inside my body. Anyway, how about you? What did you do when you got the flu? Okay. Well, I just want before I forget, um, you mentioned food. Well, after the holidays, you know, people load up on sugar during the holidays, and sugar is known to yeah. depress your yeah. immune system. So there's no, you know, you're right. you're definitely right. more susceptible when you're <clears throat> eating like that. I just drove past. Right, right. I can tell you something. Yeah, I was gonna say that's right. That it, the sugar creates inflammation, which makes you achy. It's People think that's the flu, but it's not the flu. It's, a, yeah. it's too many free radicals in your body that are making you achy and congested. Yeah, go ahead. I just drove Sorry. past mm -hmm. my little uh, village doctor here. His parking lot was just packed, you know. And I just oh, know yeah. everybody's in there. Yeah, I just I know it because I live in a small town and everybody's sick, and you know that when that. You see them in the store, and everybody's coughing and blowing their nose. And I just want to go in there and say, "People, we can get rid of this." I know. Oh my God, terrible. But um, when I when I if I got one cold or flu a year, I considered that doing really well. You know, I was doing great. Maybe it, sometimes I get two, but one was like okay. And I, if I felt one coming mm. on, I had some tricks. You know, I go in the sauna, I drink a lot of water, pray. You know, and maybe I get it, maybe I wouldn't. You know, I just be like, okay, well, I dodged a bullet this time. So I mean, you know, it it sometimes worked. And now uh, this year, now that I have the Immunix to do, I've had three come on. One, you know, full-on symptoms. I mentioned this before. I let those symptoms in just to see if I could kill it, and I did. <laughs> and then the, the other wow. two just started with, like, a little sore throat. I always get it in the throat. And I just got rid of that within minutes, you know, it was gone. And today I went, I was at school today, and the woman next to me is just coughing, sneezing. You know, we sit really close. The classroom's wow. small. She's just sick as a dog. She, you know what? Wow. I didn't even care. Normally, I'd be like, I got to get away from her. I got to go move over there. Like, I can't have this person be sick next to me. Be in the back, washing my hands. It's, you know, it's sad. Right. Dry hands from that horrible soap and cold water. It's not to of that. So, I just wow. sat there, removed the virus, you know. I. If it was coming at me, I just got rid of it, and I feel fine, you know? Cool, cool, cool. So. Amazing. Anyways, I, I did see an article on, I think it was Yahoo, about um, the best way to avoid a flu, and that is to wash your hands a lot. They say this can cut it down to, like, 51%. I don't know how they came up with that number, but... You know, they, they're promoting that and the flu shot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm all about washing your hands. Yeah, wash your you hands. You know what? <clears throat> it, it, how do you feel? <laughs> Can I ask you something? When you see that on Yahoo about washing your hands, how do you feel? I think it's a bunch of crap, really. Yeah, it's, but, pa it's pathetic, but, isn't it? Yeah. It's people, people who shot. don't know people who don't know how to cure things think that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what or they do. They think that th th every, yeah. they have these like stupid tips about it. Right. And, and uh, you know, they then they die. Yeah. And then they get die. then they get sick and they die because people die of the flu. And see I think that a lot of people don't know when we talk about curing the flu how how quickly the flu disappears. Like when you got that sore throat, or the, when you were talking about, mm -hmm. you started to feel it. Not the one with, that you let come on fully, but right. the okay. other one. Yeah. How long <laughs> what, between the time you said, uh oh, my throat's getting sore, and the time that your throat wasn't sore anymore, what was the time elapsed? <laughs> 
a minute, not, if even a minute, you know, I just removed it and it was gone. I mean, I, I so it, it disappears. It. It's like it an eraser it. comes in and takes it out. Yeah, it's just gone. That's what it's like. Yeah. And uh, one thing, though, that I do like is the whole thing, like what you were saying about the holidays and how people eat sugar and all those things and it compromises their immune system. And I think we should pay attention to that because um, you don't want to do that stuff to yourself, even if you can cure the flu. No, I mean, I don't want to tell people you can't eat sugar. And my husband and I have this conversation. He loves sweet stuff. <laughs> for, for him, it's like, you know, why does it have to be black and white? Why, you know, everything in moderation. And then my argument is like, well, what's moderation? What's good for me? How much sugar is good for me might not be how much sugar is good for you. Yeah. I, you know, tend mm -hmm. to avoid it, but like I said, it's, I don't it's make It's emotional it eating. Like when a person is sick and they haven't cured things, they eat emotionally. Definitely. And that's all the, sh that's all the sugar lovers. Yeah. And it means they're, it just, all it means is they're sick and they need to get well. And another thing, you know, when you were saying, like, how you see all these cars or whatever, or you're sitting next to this woman in class, and I'll tell you what Ross does with her classes, her English classes. She just, when he, she sees a person with the flu, she makes an announcement to everybody, and she says, we're going to have a break. I'm dead serious. This is, she does this every time. We're going to have a break. And if you don't want to learn how to cure the flu, you can go outside and hang out and smoke a cigarette or whatever you want. And if you want to learn how to cure the flu, stay in here with me. I'm going to show you how to cure the flu. So she actually, you, you want to, go ahead and do it. Show them how to cure the flu. Yeah, and, you know, just try it. Like, you have nothing to lose but the flu. Well, when, <laughs> when you're in class uh, tomorrow, will you show them how to cure the flu if they're sick? Yeah, I'll show them how to cure the flu. Make an announcement. Just say, stay with me, and I'll show you how. It's exactly what Ross does, you know. And if you want any, any further tips on it, since I've never done it, so beyond what I've told you, I don't really have any tips, but if you feel like you'd like to have, you know, hear how Ross specifically does it, why don't you just buzz her on Skype and talk to her tonight, okay. you know, after dinner and see what she has to say. She's probably going to be around yeah. <clears throat> if you call her late enough, you know. She, what I notice is Ross, she tweets around, she probably goes to bed around midnight because she tweets, I hear the tweets coming in, around between 11 and 11.30 her time, like at the at very end of the evening. For whatever reason, that's, that's her tweet time. And my machine makes a sound whenever a tweet comes. And it, it, it turns the screen on automatically. So I look at the screen and it says, Ross, that's how I know this. <laughs> I don't usually actually read the tweets right then, but I look and I go, oh yeah, that's Ross, you know. And this has been oh. go, going on for weeks, so I know, you know, that that's for your usual bedtime. So you can call when it's convenient for you and just try to try to reach her, you know, see if you can uh, pick her brain, you know. Because you'll feel better. You will feel better about yourself and your life if you don't let this stuff slide like this. You know, like, what would you do, like, since you're a master martial artist, if you saw somebody getting mugged, what would you do? Uh, well, or the, <laughs> yeah, run. That's the uh, it, it depends, you know, if there's guns involved, I don't know if I'd get myself in there, but I, I think about that, I would help out, you know, I, I definitely would help if it was like some old, old lady or something, if there's like a lot of... Well, I'm, I have to tell you, like, I'm a lousy martial artist, okay, <laughs> but... But I um, used to, I used to live in New York, and I stopped three muggings. You know. There's there's martial arts, and then there's like fighting in the street. Well, it's important to know how to do both. There's there's martial arts, and then there's just running at them. 
you know? And, yeah, right, you know, that's, like, my thing is, like, I would just, uh, you know, it's funny because I never really thought about it, like, I'd see something like that going on, and it was like waving a red cape at a bull. You know, I would just, like, turn into this ragingly angry person and, like, start running at this mugger. You know, and they always ran. They, they just always ran away, you know. <clears throat> like, New York is a place where people do stuff like that. But this, as far as the flu goes, see, maybe if you stop to think, why have I been on such a warpath against disease for so many years, you know, and I've been so consistent and I've kept it up, and the reason is that I can cure these things, like, so fast, no problem, you know, and so can you, and I see that. I see you can cure them, and I see Barb can cure them, and anybody can cure them. And I just can't stand it when I see people getting sick and not curing them. It makes, it makes me angry. But I have learned, you know what? I have really learned discrimination. Because from what Ross tells me, in any given class, there are some people who opt to go out and have a smoke and not learn how to cure the flu. And then there are others who sit and learn how to cure the flu. And I do not try to convert the heretics. I am, you know, I'm all for, I, I pick the low-hanging fruit, you know, and that's what I, that's my diet, my subsistence diet. And I focus so much like on people like you who cure things, and I absolutely ignore people who don't. And if, that's if, why you have to. Yeah. And if somebody looks like, you know, they want to cure, and they, people, people come to me all the time and they say, I want to cure this, I want to, and I, you know, like give them some pointers for a while and I watch them. And then after a while I realize that they're just, they don't have what it takes, whatever it is. And other people are like you and I realize they do. And so you're the people who I meet with and do this with. And test this question. Do, have I gotten better at this every time we've met? Yeah. Barb, what about you? Uh, yes. Interesting, because we've been, we've been meeting for like 30 years, and we also lived together for a while, so if we actually got better every time we met, have I gotten better every time I met with Barb? I get yes about you, too. So that means that, like, there was a lot there to do, because it's like yeah. 30 years of meetings with somebody who you know well, and I'm still getting better. Well, you better live to 100 if I'm going to get 30 years out of you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny because I was at the Wildlife Preserve before I started this movie, and I bumped into this guy, and he was telling me about how he's changed his diet, and I gave him McDougal, by the way. You know? Yeah. I gave, I wrote it down, he wrote it, I gave him a piece of paper and he wrote it down. And we were talking about potatoes and stuff, and uh, then it, as we were parting company, we both said, you know, you keep learning. Because I was walking away, I said, funny thing, you know, I've been studying diet for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I said, I, I, lear I just learned something last week. And he said, yep, you never stop learning, you know. Yeah. And that's the truth. You just, you never stop, you never stop. And the funny thing is, the things you learn are critical. I mean, it's not like you learn all the important things in the first week and then everything else is just, it's nice, but, you know, who cares, you know? I mean, the things that you learn 30 years later are about things that would have killed you. <laughs> you know? That's the truth. So, you know, what the people watching this need to know is you cannot cure the flu with diet or with fasting or with anything else but when you fast, your immune system is freed up and it kills the flu. And it may, not, it may not be overnight, or it may be within a few hours, depending on your, the general... Like you guys are saying that, you know, <clears throat> if you just fast, you can probably cure it in under a day. Well, yeah, you're... Well, I mean, you're well, actually, both I was saying that I meant, like, when I stop eating, my immune gets more precise. Yeah, because you're, you're in a general level of high health. So, so if you go without lunch, your immune system kicks in. But somebody else, 
might have to fast 10 days before their exactly. immune system kicks in. So, you know, see. you see... Yeah, I just talk about a day or half a day. I can get something under control. But anyway, what we're showing you how to do here, you can cure the flu with in a minute. Right. And so why don't you show them how to cure the flu? I'm going to put Barb on the big screen and go ahead and do the, do the flu cure. Show, just show them what the flu cure is. Or you want to be the? You want me to be the one with the flu? <laughs> uh, uh, or uh, we test. Do you have do you have flu in any of your bodies? Is it so you cure it? Okay. Okay. Uh, I got a yes. Okay. So um, remove flu from all your bodies. Okay, I'm now removing flu from myself and all of my bodies. Okay? Okay. So do you have flu in your spiral body? Okay, do you have any flu in my spiral body? Yes. I'm now removing flu from my spiral body. Okay, yeah. In your okay, celestial got body? Celestial body? Do you have any flu in my celestial body? No. In the universal physical? Do you have any flu in my universal physical body? No? Um, etheric body? Do you have any flu in my etheric body? No? It's usually in the gravitational Oh, body. that's right, thank you. Do you have any gravitational now? Okay, do I have any flu in my gravitational body? No. Okay, so all your bodies are free of flu? Okay, uh, let's see. I think, let's see. Spiral, let's see. Gravitation. What about, okay, what about emotional body? Mental or emotional? Yeah, try both of those. I have an emotional body. Do I have my physical body? <laughs> Astral body? <laughs> Karma body? Okay. All my bodies are free and clear of flu. All my bodies are good. Okay. Perfect. It's done. Nice. So that's what we do. We just checked all the bodies and removed anything we found so that you have your integrity back. I had a relative who died in the flu epidemic of 1900 or whatever the heck it was. Well, you know, just to go on with this, mm -hmm. what people need to know is <clears throat> that when you do this, you have to actually access the body. It's not, it's not a mantra, you know, and you have to get a Perfect. signal. As, did you show your little signal there? I did. I okay. You could see it. Like as she was doing it, you saw she was getting yeah. a little finger signal. And then you have to feel the flu disappear. If the flu does not disappear, then that, that may mean you're not accessing the bodies or you're doing some other thing wrong or you just have some other thing that you have to cure. Before yeah, that, that's what I think yeah. people would understand too because we've been doing so much immunity. It's like if you can't do what we just did quickly, like when I do that I feel like this nice, you know, halo of protection That's around. the important like, thing, that's but, right. Yeah, but, yeah. If, but if you have something in your way of being well or some like all sort of sundry things that you have to go to the eye college to learn about, Trauma well, I think what you were saying, what you were saying a minute ago, we should go back to that. That yeah. you guys do a lot, you cure a lot of things in, mo in the emotional, spiritual, and physical areas all day. And so, flu becomes this very specific thing that you hit and take out. And this is what people who cure, need to cure flu or herpes or some other viral-based disease they don't realize that they have to, you know, they should be doing this with everything. You have mm -hmm. to do this with everything. A lot of times you have to cure everything to cure one thing. But the other side of that is that I've had complete strangers show up on the phone for a flu cure. We have flu cure shows on the cure show page. And they cured the flu in 20 minutes when they had never done any immunix before in their lives. So there is that too, see? It is possible to watch this movie and cure the flu. Yeah. Bingo. I also think it, it helps when somebody else is doing it with you, or if you are. 
Yes, um, it helps to, to have a friend connected right. with you. It, it can be on Skype or it can be on... Uh, oh, by the way, I just lost the call, if you guys can hear me. I don't know if you... Uh, even, even, if you're, even, if, even if you're watching, uh, watching a movie, because it's like when so you can remove each other's flu. Yes. That's right. You, so you could be on Skype together, but it, it's also if you're together personally, that's very good. But it really helps to do it with somebody, to have a connection outside of your own body. Although, yes. if, if you're doing this for a while, like, these, neither one of these people were with anybody when they cured their flus. And they both cured flus this flu season. So, And I haven't had a flu even try to come on since 1993. But I do a lot of immunics all the yeah. time. Like I spent, I, when I first discovered this, I just spent all day doing it. So, and I, I had, you know, time and money so I could do that. So I, I didn't have to do anything else. And I could just do it from, I didn't talk to too many people. And I woke up and started doing it and, you know, and did it all day. And I did that for years, actually. You know, and you know what? The, you know, the truth is, like, so many people come to, to come to me and they have no money. And I, I always think, well, gosh, it doesn't cost anything to cure things, you know. And I don't realize that the only reason that I was able to cure all those things is because I had money and I, and I didn't have to do anything but cure things all day. So, yeah, it does cost money to cure things. Cure costs money. It's expensive, you know. And now I've been telling people they better get a smartphone. Yeah. Because anybody who wants to learn this really just has to turn on these movies and listen to them all day for weeks, months. Yeah. And then, you know, okay. you, you can yeah. back it off a little bit, but then you still have to keep listening to them on and on. And there is something to be said for, like, when Jen was saying, like, when she was a kid, she was basically raised on a really, you know, in a healthy way traditionally healthy way and had a good diet and had a good start and that was just, that was true for me too really even um, my father had a restaurant and I had a lot of hamburgers and candy bars and stuff but basically I had, had a good quality food around me and I had good you know medical treatment or mother that would keep me separate if I was sick and all that kind of stuff and about the hand washing like you know sanitation is relevant yeah it is you know but it's not, it's not like you can wash your hands and then forget about things, though. Like, like I was remembering when I was in that refugee camp, or, when, or Gandhi, and those kind of people, like, you, you have to understand the transference of things. Like, be conscious when you touch something or somebody else touches something. I can almost, like, see a flu in a room or watch it. You know, like, you can see how things are transferred if you if you calm down and get into the calm, clear place and slow down and observe and just be intentional. Even, even when you had that person next to you, as long as you were aware of what was happening, you could block it or, or you know, not catch it if you're just totally unconscious and somewhere else. And suddenly, you know, twelve okay. hours later, you remember that person sitting next to you in panic, and then true and fact. You, as you a know. as a completion, because we're supposed to stop now. Okay. As a, as a completion, I will say that I almost never wash my hands or use soap. Okay. Here. Number one. Here. Two. And, and two. A lot of hands and hug a lot of people. I have not had a flu since 1993 because I, I'm immune to viruses, cancer, and all these things because I do immunics all the time. Yeah. And yeah. <clears throat> so what you really need to do is focus on the thing that really does work. Yeah, but what I'm saying is it's kind of like a, like a. It's like a connection. Like, you know, when people wash their hands, they're probably doing some primitive form of penis. Like, you know those machines where they shine a light on you and it's supposed to sterilize your hands? Like, that's probably kind of what you're doing. Like, I'm kind of always constantly removing or sterilizing myself just by thought, you know? So, if a person's, like, washing their hands and thinking that it's going to work, it's, it's going to take more than that. That would be a very clunky way to do immunics. It is a clunky way, but I'm saying like that is... I agree with you. Uh, it was like when I used to go in the sauna. That was my clunky way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. With bacteria, 
washing works. Yeah, and I'm all for, you know, shaking hands with people that have washed their hands after using the toilet. So I'm not going to say, don't wash your hands, it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, bacteria are hard. We, see, we, kill, we easily, it's funny because doctors easily kill bacteria. We don't. We easily kill viruses. Doctors don't. You know, bacteria are second dimensional and we usually crank our immune systems. I haven't had very much trouble with bacteria. And you can, I have, have actually seen people kill bacteria and or stop bacterial infections with immunics. So, but just so you know, um, you're right, I agree with you. I just think that what we're trying to teach people here is, you know, the right way. Well, yeah. that's test, that's test if we taught them anything or taught them the right way. What do you get when you test it? I get a yes. Good. Well, thank you both so much. Thank you. <laughs> Did see you wash those hands? No, just kidding. I'll, <laughs> I'll see you both on Friday, yes? Okay, Friday. Ciao. See ya. Ciao. Ciao, Bye. bambinas. Ciao, ciao. This movie was given to you by HUM, the World Ministry of Immunics, which enables you to cure medically incurable diseases. We also produce the Cure Drive in the Eye College of Immunics. This is the home page. And as you see here, the movie that starts playing automatically when the page opens is a three-hour tutorial film, which underneath it is a, the beginning of a series of movies. If you click on these links, uh, you go to another movie that's a continuation of the tutorial, uh, showing different aspects of uh, the things that people need to get into when they cure things. The movie shows many people curing things. You'll find complete cure tutorials on the home page. Um, under the group at the top is another. Uh, this is a video and text tutorial. And uh, if you click on the link, uh, you'll see it has 10 lessons. And you can click on the, each lesson and you'll see it that the lessons are movies interspersed with explanations. And if you continue scrolling down the home page, you'll find a huge bank of movies of people curing things. Here's one of someone curing multiple sclerosis that you can click on and these play. Hopefully this one will play in a moment. There it is. <laughs> so that woman cured uh, PPMS and MS. Here you'll find people from every continent Europe, the U.S., Asia, Canada. This woman cured shingles and in this particular movie. She, that's what she's uh, demonstrating. And at the top of the home page, you will find links to the uh, cure meetings that we have every week. Um, 9 p.m. New York time, Rome time, 8 p.m. Underneath the Cure Meetings, uh, you'll find a link to Friend Me. It's actually Byard on Byard, speaking to you on Facebook. And you'll meet many people who are my Facebook friends there who have cured various diseases. Many of us have cured herpes, which is what I cured. Also there, if you have trouble getting signals, there is a uh, whole bank of movies that focus on people who are just starting to get their first signals. Uh, many of these people went on to bigger and better things and you see them in other movies. 
but these are movies about their signals, how they got their first signals. At the very top of the home page, you will find above the uh, masthead a link to the cure shows. And we uh, documented people curing things on, these are on the, we did this on the phone. There are shows on about 75 diseases, and the diseases are listed alphabetically, as you can see. Uh, you actually hear the people curing these diseases during these shows. Uh, that's post-traumatic stress syndrome from 9-11, you know, the uh, catastrophe. Uh, we have a show on that, and fever, somebody curing the fever, several people curing fibromyalgia, flu. We had a flu hotline, and there are many people. These people are actually curing flu, and the flu stops. It clears up during the 15 or 20 minutes of the call. It doesn't take long to cure the flu. Uh, over here, you have... Uh, Paralysis, parasitic parenting, Parkinson's disease. When you cure something, please uh, join your voice with the voices of the many people who came before you by reporting your cure in our poll, which you can do right above the tally of the cures that people have reported is here at the top. And as you can see, there's a little link here. And if you click on that, you will come to a form that enables you to report your cure. This page is the hub of the Web College, and as you can see, there are uh, detailed lessons on how to remove viruses, cure cancer. Here's a movie on the right here of a doctor who actually years ago cured the flu on camera. You'll notice that skill one in the hierarchy of skills is cure physical diseases. Um, that's the very, that's the, actually the easiest thing with this particular approach. And I've uh, put a great many things in the hierarchy of skills that relate to cure, fi curing physical diseases such as ending trauma, working on your organs. Now, if we go into the recode your DNA, these are, there are f 10 applications or 11 applications, and recode your DNA is one of them. If we go inside here, what we see is a page with a huge amount of links. And then if we look at the links on the right, after the ones on the left which prepare you, these are the actual lessons. And you can see some of them it might be hard for some people to see why blind installation procedure is related to recoding your DNA. And this is why we've put it in this application so that it relates it in your mind. This is The reason the Web College is organized the way it is is to relate things for you in your mind. And obviously there are a huge number of things like if you're curing cancer or herpes or any medically incurable disease, it's obvious that there are a great many things that you have to learn. And they're different for everybody. You do not have to learn everything that's listed here. <laughs> and in fact, cure is instantaneous. And it's always unexpected how it will come. Like, watch these women. They're going to give you a perspective. This is a good way to conclude this little overview I'm giving you here. Say, can I go to the 144th dimension? See if you get a signal on that. Can I go to the 144th dimension? Can I go to the 144th dimension? Yes? I guess I can. Go ahead and do it. Okay, okay. And both of you go to the 144th dimension. I'm taking myself to the 144th dimension. Mm. Yeah. Me too.
No stopping for gas on the eighth dimension. <laughs> <laughs> I feel uh, clear. Yeah, I feel uh, less interested in anything below the 144th dimension. <laughs> <laughs> Can we stay here all the time? I know, exactly. <laughs> This would take a lot of backstory, but I, there are some decisions that my family's making that have that I now feel clear about. Yes, because when you have that perspective from the 144th dimension, yeah, you, like you simply don't care about anything as much. That's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care it doesn't sound so good. <laughs> well, see, that's right. I, it, but it's it. That's really not an effect. When when you hear, when people hear we say we don't care, they go, "Well, God, that you, that's sick," you know. <laughs> okay, I know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing.